coin toss was while we were running the interview. It was won by WPI. They decided to take the ball, so they're going to get possession first in today's game. RPI decided to defend the goal, which is at the East Campus Arena. That's to our right, so it's... Nope, pardon me. WPI. Oh, RPI is defending the goal to our left, which is north. Yes. By the Jumbotron. By the Jumbotron, and <laughs> WPI is defending at the East Campus Stadium. That end in this first quarter of play. So it's RPI left to right, WPI right to left across your radio dial in this first quarter of play. Beautiful day here in Troy. It's in the mid-70s and sunny. It's the same weather as it was the last two RPI football games. So we have no expectations. I don't think it's possible to rain. There's hardly any clouds in the sky. Oh, well, maybe up north yeah. there are, but we're not expecting any rain today. It looks like it's going to be a lovely day for football. Peter Nilsson has teed the ball up at the 30-yard line as we're about to get underway in the Transit Trophy game. WPI coming in with a big win over Becker, 55 to nothing. Nilsson boots the ball away, and we are underway here in the first quarter of play. Taken at the 12-yard line, to the 15, to the 20, straight up the middle. There was a hole, and then suddenly brought down was Ernie Mello on the return. Mello is stopped at the... 38 and a half, we'll call a pretty good field position to start out WPI today. This is Mike Oliveri on the tackle there. Senior listed as a captain on this roster, actually. Linebacker out of Milford, Massachusetts. First and 10, WPI officially at the 38-yard uh, line. There I go again. I'm reading the WPI roster. This is the look I gave you. Those that was you, Steven those Burpo. Of you on the air. Steven Burpo on the tackle. Sorry, guys. Those of you on the air probably missed the look I gave Pat. First down, straight up the middle for WPI, and that's a pickup of five as he's out to the 43. Try to catch who was on the run there. Do we know? Uh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Aaron Champagne on the run for WPI. You doing okay there, Pat? A little tired. <laughs> I'm fine, guys. Aaron Champagne, senior captain for the WPI engineers. It's WPI against RPI. Both the engineers will try to use the school name. It's the option play. Pitch to the far side, and it goes out. That was a pitch right. Rolls out of bounds, and that's going to lose a couple of yards as it was a lateral and WPI gets backed up, too, on that play. Now, WPI is a very powerful rushing team. That's their offense is very much based out of the old school triple option. Though it's run out of not a shotgun formation, it's a new pistol formation where it's generally a short snap to the quarterback with the running back behind him, but we'll see this play out of the traditional shotgun. Pat McCauley is the quarterback for WPI. He's going to throw left. That is complete, and that's a first down as into RPI territory is Trevor Dunn on the reception, and WPI gets the first first down of the game. 13.50 to go here, first quarter, no score. The offense for WPI, Pat McCauley is the quarterback. The running backs are Aaron Champagne and Ernie Mello. The wide receivers are Nick Bean and Mohamed Yatim, who's listed as three, but he's actually 23, we are told. And the tight end is Mike Petilio. The line up front is Mark Caulfield, Greg Molnow. Matt Weissman, Tyler LaPerriere, yeah, I'll go with that, and Tim Grupp. First and 10, RPI jumps into the neutral zone, but they claim they got back. It's going to be McCauley on the option, and he runs left, and he's out at the RPI 41. And that is your standard triple option. They have the dive read, he can pull it, he can give it, and then you have the pitch as he pulls it and runs outside. Flag on the play, I'd mentioned that RPI had moved into the neutral zone. for the call. Offsides on the defense, and WPI will take the call. They'll keep the down and get the same amount of yardage that they would have gained. Yeah. The I play. think they lose a yard or two. I think they lose two yards, but they'll get the down back. No, they'll decline it. They'll decline. They'll take the yards. It's a good play. It's a difference of three, so it's second and two instead of first and five. WPI opts to take the play. They're down to the RPI 41 for a second and... Two, second and two. Second and two. Mello and Champagne in the backfield between McCauley. On the option, right this time, pitch. That works, big hole, first down to the 30, over to the oh. sideline, to the 25, to the 20, cuts inside, and down at the 11. Nice work by WPI, and they're in the red zone. Ernie Mello on the carry for WPI. And it's first and... 10 for WPI at the 12-yard line. No score here in the first quarter of play. 13 minutes to go in the quarter. 
WPI moving downfield. They scored 55 against Becker last week. So they can certainly put numbers up. They can execute. The question is, as with Utica last week, can they execute against RPI's defense? Right now they're moving the ball very, very smoothly. Champagne and Mello in the backfield between McCauley on first down. McCauley hands off. This is an inside handoff and stop for no gain. He's plugged up right at the line of scrimmage, went straight ahead and saw nothing. And it'll be second down and 10 from the 12-yard line. WPI making some substitutions. Now the issue with option football and playing defense is always assignment football and it really takes a lot of discipline. Sometimes you have to avoid the guy with the ball because you're assigned either the pitch man, you're assigned the quarterback or the dive man. Someone needs to tackle all three. Four wide out formation. Mello stayed in the backfield. Champagne, he'll take it himself to the 10. Champagne to the 5. Stiff arms one man dives to the end zone. I'm not sure he made it. The officials say he is out inside the 1. That'll be a first down though for WPI. And we're not seeing that assignment football right now from the engineer's defense. Everybody's kind of going after the guy with the ball, and that's exactly what the, op the option is based around. Is if everybody pursues to the guy with the ball, you get rid of it, and someone has a lot of room to run with. First and goal, WPI inside the one. 11.50 to go here in the first quarter. No score. WPI taking their time, coming to the line. This is the first drive of the game. WPI won the toss and took the ball. Mitch McClune goes into the backfield now. He's back there along with Champagne. Now McClune goes in motion. McCauley takes the snap, gives to Champagne. Flag comes out, and down short of the goal line is Champagne. The flag came out right as the ball was snapped. I'm thinking this is against RPI again. Waiting for the official. That is offsides against RPI. David Scott is the referee for today's game. He signals offside against RPI, and that'll get the down back for WPI. It'll be first and goal from the one. Again, not the start we were looking for here for the engineers. If you're an engineers football fan, they're kind of getting run over pretty easily right now. You hope to see the defense stick, stiffen up here, for, hold them to a field goal, be a victory at this point for the engineers' defense, or the RPI engineers' defense. Keep that in mind. Both teams are nicknamed the engineers. WPI, first and goal. is actually the half-yard line. They'll move it to there. McClune stays in the backfield along with Champagne as McCauley is under center. Nope, that's Mello on the carry. Mello straight ahead. He's in for the touchdown. WPI leads 6 0. And yeah, and you can see the rivalry come out, the excitement over here on the WPI sidelines. Again, they haven't won this transit trophy game going back five, six, seven, eight years. Longer than that, mid 90s. Mid 90s, even. Okay. So, longer than I've been around. So they're really itching to take this thing home. Cody Beckel is out to try the extra point for WPI. Snap, spots down, kick is up, and Beckel makes it perfect. 7-0 WPI leads with exactly 11 minutes to go here in the first quarter of play. RPI looking to get the offense back out there as they trail in today's game. They never led in the Utica game last week. So the last time they've had a lead is since the last play of the last play of the first half against Endicott. They scored. They led for the entire second half at Endicott. That's the only time they've led this season. Beckel goes back out to the 30, looking to tee the ball up. Again, this is a very rushing dominant triple option offense for WPI and a very effective one they've you know games over 300 yards is not uncommon for the uh, WPI offense 300 yards on the ground I mean they beat Becker was it 55 nothing yes that's yeah all running the ball we are ready for action once again as Beckel has the ball teed up properly and the kick is up. Wood has to backpedal to his six yard line. 10, 15, to the left, 20, 25, and an open field tackle brings him down at the 27. Graham Lito on the tackle for WPI. And that was a good open field tackle because if uh, Wood had made a miss, he had a lot of room to work with. RPI starts out their first drive of the game at the 28 yard line. 
RPI of course. Of course, led on offense by Mike Herman, the running backs Matt Wood and Nick Costa. They'll rotate them out along with Strunk. Wide receivers are Pat McCarthy, Austin Caswell, and Ray Davis. First and 10. This will be five wideouts for Herman on this first down play. Herman looks left, throws in the flat, complete, and for a loss. Immediately tackled is Caswell, and he's down to 25 and loses three. Nobody was fooled on that play, and Caswell just got upended. He caught the ball. A, a, a good, hey, props to Austin Caswell for hanging on to that one because he got hit just as he was catching it and upended. Managed to hang on to it and avoid the fumble, but oof, that was a pretty gnarly hit. Uh, Brian Jones, Eric Dinarello, second down. I'm giving you the line right there. Pass that is complete right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, it'll pick up a bunch of yards out to the 31-yard line as was taken by Marciano. Well, that's good to see Eric Marciano get in. He had a really great game last year. We had over 100 yards and a touchdown, and we hadn't seen him until this point this season. He's a very talented back out of Boston Spa, junior. It's good to see him in the rotation. 7 0 WPI leads. RPI's offensive line. Left to right, Brian Jones, Eric Dinarello, Joe Stans, Dan Corner, and Brandon Marshall. RPI facing third and seven at their own 31. Four wideout formation. Herman drops back in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Throws short to McCarthy. Completed. Now he's. Got no room to maneuver to the right. He was just in a mess of players, and the offensive line had gotten pushed over there as well, and he only was able to pick up one, and RPI sends out the punt team. And we see three straight screen plays for the RPI engineers. Again, uh, I was talking to Coach Joe King about how they're playing Michael Herman, who's a very talented running back, or running quarterback, as well as a good passer, and they're really stacking more people in the box than you would see against a four wide receiver offense to try and take that away. You see the Brian Saray is trying to take advantage of that with the screen passes. Not too effective this time. Fourth down, RPI sends out Mike Grubbs to kick. Low kick, but he's going to get a bunch of yards as it goes over the return man's head. I think he touched it. He has to be picked up. He'll make it out to the 26. It was over his head. It, he put up his hands. Looks like he touched it with his fingertips. That was Matt Sear on the return, and he had to race back and grab it before RPI had a chance to recover that. 7 nothing. WPI leads. 8.52 to go here in the first quarter of play. It's a nice pump by Grubbs. He's been doing a really good job this season. WPI, second possession of the game. Scored a touchdown on the first one. A one-yard run by Mello. They'll start out at their own 26. McCauley fakes the handoff, rolls right, looking under pressure, fumbles the ball, picked up by RPI, fumbled again, picked up by RPI. Now it's loose in the end zone. I don't know who picked it up. RPI Darryl had, it. had it. Daryl Brown had it, fumbled it at the two. Then it went loose, went into the end zone. RPI could have had possession, but nope. WPI recovers in the end zone. It's a touchback. They'll go back out to the 20 for a first down. Really? Yes. <laughs> yes. Here's the explanation. Once Daryl Brown picked up the fumble, RPI now had possession. When he lost it again and the ball went into the end zone, the impetus is from RPI right. putting the ball in the end zone. So when WPI recovered, they didn't put it in the end zone. RPI did. Therefore, it's a touchback. It's not a safety. And so reset the drive, and instead of being first and 10 from the 23, it's first and 10 from the 20. Correct. So Daryl Brown picked it up as he was running, and he got inside the 10. The ball got knocked away, got pushed into the end zone. WPI recovers. That's a touchback ball at the 20. 8.41 to go here first quarter. RPI had a chance but lost it, and WPI has it once again, first and 10 at the 20. Good break gone bad. McCauley out of the shotgun on first down. This is a handoff left, and Champagne is able to get out to the 22. That's Colin King on the stop there middle linebacker for the uh, RPI. Middle linebacker for RPI. I'm going to have to get that straight. By the end of the game, I'll have that straight. Stop saying the engineers because you won't know who I'm talking about. WPI, three wide out formation with the second down play. Looks like that's McC McClone. McClune alone in the backfield. Now McCauley comes out from under, from behind the center. Where's the 25 second clock here? 10 seconds left on the play clock. Just call it the play clock, really. Three wideouts, McClune in the backfield for McCauley. Has trouble with the snap, holds on to it, passes to McClune, complete to the 20, 25, open field tackle at the 26. He's taken down by McCormick, and that makes it third and four for WPI. Interesting seeing him audible there. 
You also see they have they use a six man excuse me a seven man line usually most of the time out of the shotgun. One running back, quarterback in the pistol formation, two tight ends. It really is a running formation, but it spreads you out at the same time with the three wide receivers. Gives the running backs and the quarterback a lot of room to work with. Third down and four. We'll call it officially three, but it's really four on the field for WPI. McLuhan takes the inside handoff, cuts right to the, towards the sideline, gets near it, but he's got a first down to 31 when he's finally brought down. And WPI is winning the battle on the scoreboard, leading 7-0, and certainly winning the battle of time of possession. As well as yardage. They're just really moving the ball very well here on the ground. The engine, there I go again. RPI. RPI is not getting off the blocks like they should be. They're creating... WPI is having no trouble creating lanes for the running backs. First contact isn't until four, four yards down the field. If that happens all day, you can't stop them. First and 10, WPI at the 32. WPI leading 7 nothing. McCauley looking to throw. Right, complete at the sideline. And that's a pickup of nine as Josh Less grabs it, and he's out at the 41. And if they're going to do that, it's going to be a long day for RPI. Very strong running offense, and if they just can get a couple of throws out there to keep defense honest, there's not you know you got to play good, disciplined defense. There's not much you can scheme against these kind of offenses. Balls at the 41 for WPI. Second and one. McCauley with two backs and two wideouts. Handoff on first down. That'll be Mello. He's got a first down. Dashes and darts. Goes ahead. He's across the 50 down to the RPI 47. Now he did that one. The blocking really wasn't there for him, but he made a couple cuts, made two or three guys miss to make that play happen. First and 10 WPI at the RPI 47. 6.20 to go here in the first quarter. 7-0 WPI leads. RPI's defense, they're out there right now. Line is Daryl Brown, Pat Harris, Coney Hendricks, and Patrick Gilreath. The linebackers are Ray Pasco, Jeff McCormick, Colin King. The cornerbacks are Kevin Frame and Nick Herrera, and the safeties are Justin Hasselkus and Mike Kukish. First and 10 at the RPI 47 for WPI. Crowded backfield, runs straight ahead, picks up one. And that was Par uh, Pat Harris and Jeff McCormick in on that tackle there. That's what you got to do. You got to get some penetration, and you've got to wrap up as soon as you can. That's what happened. Limited WPI to one yard on that play. This game's going to end in two hours at the rate it's going. Well, when you run the ball, the clock just keeps rolling. WPI keeping the ball on the ground, and they've possessed the ball for most of this first half. Well, most of this first quarter. Five and a half to go in the quarter. Seven nothing WPI leads. Three wide out formation. McCauley rolls right, looking downfield. Passes short. It's incomplete. Went off the hands of Nick Bean, the intended receiver, and it falls incomplete. It'll be third and long for WPI. And that's a run pass option play. The line kind of strings it out, giving the quarterback the ability on the sprint out to either take off with the ball or dump it downfield. Well defensed by RPI. Uh, not giving him either of those options. But again, it gives you more into the idea of this offense. It's kind of very similar to the uh, Rich Rodriguez offense that he used to run at West Virginia, now running at Michigan State. Third down, ball at the 46. McCauley out of the shotgun, throws left, incomplete. He was looking on the near side for Josh Less and threw behind him, and it went off the fingertips. Again, it takes, it takes a very talented quarterback to run an offense like this. Uh, not unlike Mike Herman, it would be very, and RPI does have some elements of this in their offense as well, where you have the dive, read, pull, pass option, and Herman does that very well, but we're also seeing the uh, WPI quarterback, Pat McCauley, doing a very good job with this as well. Fourth down, WPI coming to punt, or out to punt. High kick, good hang time. RPI is going to stay away from him. It bounces inside the 20, and it's out at the 12. 5.06 to go here in the first quarter of play. 7-0 WPI on top. RPI has the ball. And we have seen the difference in net yardage right now. 85 for WPI to 5 for RPI. Again, it's a tale of two engineering teams, I guess, right now. And WPI is definitely coming out in the top end of it, statistically, and they're ahead on the scoreboard. Point of note, Nick Carrera already has four tackles, the junior cornerback from Bellin Jesuits in Miami Beach, Florida. Very, very talented cornerback. RPI first and 10 at their own 12. Herman gives to Costa on first down, up the middle, not much there. Costa maybe picked up a yard to the 13. 
not a lot of real estate to work with. And the difference that you'll see between the WPI offense when they run the ball and RPI, and it is a similar offense and similar zone blocking scheme, is that Costa's met at the line of scrimmage. There's his first contact. The first contact for WPI is four yards downfield. Second down to nine, RPI. They'll have triple receivers to the right. Go with the handoff. Picks up some yards. Picks up about five. They're out to the 18. It'll be third and four. Matt Wood on the carry there for the RPI engineers. And RPI looking at another third down. This is the game three of the season, and I've been seeing RPI going to a lot of third downs. Yep. It's been that way all season. Again, they're not, you're not getting those gains downfield, those you know seven, eight yard, ten gains that they're used to. And again, they're trying to get, get a breakout screen every play, and it's just being well defensed by every team. They're not fooling anyone. Third and four. Three wide outs right, one to the left. Wood is in the backfield with Herman. Herman out of the shotgun, rolls right. He's got a bunch of receivers there, under pressure, runs into his own lineman. Now he'll get hit, and he's down at the 18. And RPI looks like they'll be punting again. He was trying to reverse the field on the run when he saw no one downfield, and there was no field to reverse. Ran into the back of his offensive guard there. Again, they were stringing out. They can't see him. It's just tough to try and reverse field in those plays. It takes really, really just a good situation and a fantastic cut to pull that off. Mike Grubbs out to punt on fourth down. As the offense is second possession out for RPI, and it looks like another three and out. Grubbs has trouble with the snap, gets the ball back, boots it away. Taken at the 38, 40, 45, stopped abruptly at the 45 was Matt Sear. And WPI, good field position for their really fourth possession of the game. 2.58 to go here in the first quarter. WPI leads in the transit trophy game seven to nothing. And Matt Wood laid a heck of a hit on that special teams tackle. Matt Wood, the former fullback, now being converted to linebacker, and he's in the game on defense right now. He was the fullback last week. Again, I guess it, not, not enough power running for him. You got a guy that can really hit, put him out there and let him tackle people. WPI at the 45. McCauley hands off, Mello. Oops, I missed that. McCauley kept the ball. I got faked out, and he's set, taken down for a loss of two. Yeah, and RPI, at least they didn't get faked out. Again, it's, it's all assignments. It's not a matter of getting faked out or not. You can't watch the ball when you're playing defense against this kind of an offense. That's what they want you to do. They want you to watch the ball and not know who has it. It's, it, it's option football. Loss of one on that play, second and 11. Flag comes out right at the snap. The handoff goes left to the 49. RPI has been called for offside twice on defense. David Scott, the referee, comes out to give us the call this time. Came out quick. Either in a position of holding. Might have been too soon for holding. Was there an illegal shift against WPI? They're gesturing that WPI is going back. Lined up in the neutral zone. Usually a penalty on the defense, but... WPI gets it down back. They'll be at the 39, their own 39, for second and 16. Three wide out set. Mello in the backfield for WPI. McCauley out of the shotgun. And WPI moved early, yep. flags come out, that'll be a loss of five yards. This is when you start digging that hole, you start feeling, again, you start thinking about penalties, and it, it can just move. We can see it move from team to team. You start, someone makes a penalty. Oh, God, I can't mess up this play. And what do you do? You mess up that play. You jump offside. You forget the snap count. It's amazing how that just gets contagious throughout a team. We saw that back at Endicott with the drops. One guy dropped a pass, six guys drop a pass in a row. You start thinking about it, you start making mistakes. Ball back at the 34, second and a really long way to go for WPI. 21 call it. McCauley looks to pass, now he'll run straight ahead. McCauley gets to the 40. 
This little play didn't have much going on there. Couldn't get the swing pass out. Decided to take it up the middle and get about five yards. To make it third and 15. You have to think McCauley might be a little gun shy after fumbling the ball deep in his own territory. Yeah. Not that that's wrong, not that that's bad, but he may be thinking, most importantly, don't make a mistake and give the ball up here. We see uh, RPI out in the nickel package. WPI puts three receivers to the right. McCauley has trouble, fumbles the ball, gets hit, and he's sacked. They'll say forward progress around the 30, but it's a lot more yards gone by, and WPI needs to punt. And that is the senior captain defensive end, Daryl Brown, a mainstay on this defense for the past three years, and one of the more talented guys in the team, showing what he does best. He gets back there, and he gets his mitts on the quarterback, and he brings him down. WPI out to punt once more. Booted away by Mike, Matt Patiglio. Mike, Mike Patiglio, pardon me. Taken at the 35 to the near sideline and down near the 40 was Austin Caswell on the return near the 41. We're less than a minute to go here in the first quarter of play and WPI leads 7-0. It's not going to look great on the stat sheet, but that was a heck of a return by Austin Caswell. Again, he, he, got, he got faced with a lot of oncoming pressure and was able to get out of it and actually pick up a couple of yards. Caswell returning punch. Normally it's McCarthy, but we are seeing Caswell in there right now. Yeah, they're gonna, they try to keep a rotation with a lot of things here with RPI. Look to keep guys fresh. Again, it takes a lot out of you, returning kicks. Wood on the inside handoff on first down, picks up about one. WPI's defense stops him. Just nothing doing up there. No, no real push by the RPI line right now. WPI's defense: Bre Brendan Gove, Peter Gill, Hal Reeder are the lines, the linemen. It's a three-four. Chris O'Connor, Michael Oliveri, Hussein Yatim, and Tom Thackeray are the linebackers. The safeties are Jack Mulhern and John Perron, and the cornerbacks are Manny Cambra and Graham Lido. Pickup of only one on that play. Second down and nine. As RPI goes, trips left. Herman moves a little to his left. Now throws McCarthy. That's complete. RPI's got a first down. McCarthy fumbles it, and it's taken by WPI. Whether it's, I believe that was pulled out of the air. Yeah, it was. So it doesn't matter if he fumbled or it, whether he didn't have possession because as long as it stayed in the air and it was grabbed out of the air by Graham Lido, it's WPI's ball. They've got it at the 47 for a first down. That's probably going in the stat books as an interception. I thought McCarthy made a move. I thought he had the ball, yeah, made a move, he, then lost the It was the, the contact that jarred the ball loose. I'm calling it a fumble in my book. It is. I mean, it was a complete pass by Herman, and he shouldn't have that on his stat book for the day. But depending on how you want to look at that, whether McCarthy had established possession or not, you have to make a football move is, is, is the rule, correct? That's what they say the rule is. I'm not it's, sure that's in the rule book. There is an... There was an argument, there are a couple of recent plays in the NFL where whether it's an interception or a touchdown or when possession occurs, one of the things that came up, as you mentioned, the football move, but apparently it's not in the NFL rule book. We also had that Calvin Johnson catch, what was it, last week, where he had it in the end zone and he was coming down and he obviously made the catch, but as he went to the ground, the ball came out and it was ruled incomplete and everybody and their brother knew that it was a touchdown. So apparently, as I'm reading these discussions or these things online, there's a secret officiating rule book the NFL has to explain how to officiate, really? which is not public knowledge. Really? Yes. The general public does not have access to that. It's the second quarter starting here as that turnover resulted in the end of the quarter. WPI getting the ball and now a sack. As on first and 10, McCauley couldn't get away and he sacked for a loss of four. And that was Corey White, sophomore defensive line from Taberg, New York. Again, being disciplined there. I mean, I was fake that. I thought he had handed the ball off, but you wrap the quarterback up in this offense on every play. You hit the quarterback. That's how you play defense against this offense. On second down, Mello takes the carry. Cuts inside. Mello to the 50, to the 45. Close to a first down. Looks like he's about a yard short of getting the first down, but WPI is in RPI territory at the 46. Nope, 44. 
He's just got room. He's got lanes to work with up the middle. The zone blocking scheme of WPI is being executed very well here. And like I was saying before, playing defense against this, three people should get hit on every play if you're going to play IPM football. Your quarterback should be getting knocked out, the pitch man should be getting knocked out, and the dive man should be getting knocked out in every play. That's how you play defense against option football. Third and one. Two backs, two wideouts right. McCauley to McClune. McClune dives in, and where did he stop? Looks like his knee hit right around the marker. He had to get... Yep. If he got inside the 43, he's got a first down, and he's got it. Yeah, he didn't have much, he didn't have far to go. The officials are looking at it now. The referee will signal first down. So WPI moves those chains. 13.47 to go here in the second quarter, pardon me, of play. WPI 7, RPI nothing. Should be noted, Ernie Mello is averaging 15 yards a carry at this point in the game for WPI. Time of possession, 10 for WPI, 5 for RPI in that first quarter. Four wideout formation, handoff to McClune. Had some room, cuts left as he crosses the line of scrimmage, and he's down to the 37. He'll pick up 5, 6. Call it a game of 6. Again, great push up front. The uh, RPI defensive line is not holding their ground. I mean, generally what you want to do, especially in a 4-3 defense, is you want your defensive lineman be occupying blockers, occupy two blockers at a time. That leaves your linebackers free to fill gaps and create tackles, and they're just getting pushed off the ball right now. On second down, Mello takes the inside handoff, and he has stopped maybe after a gain of one to the 36, so it's third down and long. And that push up front is impressive. I, I'm, I'm really taken back by it. You can just see, well, I can see, you on the radio can't see, that just the line just bells back about three or four yards at the beginning of every snap. WPI comes out low and in good offensive line technique, gets underneath the pads of the RPI uh, defensive lineman, and they're just moving back. And that makes running the football very, very easy. Third down and four, two backs, two wideouts. McCauley, handoff, not going to be a first down. That was not such a good play. Mello took the carry. He was hit immediately at the line. And yeah, that looks good, but what I was concerned about is I saw uh, WPI quarterback again, I'll get his name here real quick, Pat McCauley carrying out the fake of the option, and there was only one defender over there, which means there wasn't a guy on the quarterback and the pitchman. There's only one person over there. If the team gets faked out and gets away with a dive and McCauley's got the ball, that's a touchdown. Someone should be on each of those players on every possession. They'll put two left, one right. McClune in the backfield, and... On fourth down, nothing as McCauley looked to look like a fake, like he was going to pass, then turned around, handed off to McClune, fooled nobody, and WPI turns it over on downs at the RPI 37. What was he thinking with that play call? Don't know. Uh, running a draw on fourth and five. Again, I, I, on downs that you have to get picked up, and if you listen to me before, I don't like cute plays on important downs. I, I, if I'm going to call an offense, if I'm, you know, offensive play calling, Get someone that far downfield and throw them the ball. If you got to get five yards, put someone six yards downfield and have them catch a pass. That's how you pick up fourth downs. That's how you pick up third downs. Get cued on second and short. 7 nothing WPI. First and 10 RPI. Strunk is in the game, and he's going to take the carry. His first carry of the game, he's out to the 41. Correction, Marciano on the carry. Oh, Marciano, pardon me. seeing more of him today. Yes, you're right, Marciano. I, I, I didn't get any kind of injury report, but it's possible uh, Strunk may be uh, hobbling a little bit this week. We haven't seen him yet. Marciano with a gain of four, second down and six. Herman in the pass, flat to the right, complete. Out on the far sidelines is Reggie Polas. And he's got a first down into WPI territory at the 46. And that is freshman wide receiver, again, from Bell and Jesuit in Miami, Florida, which is starting to become an RPI football factory. We've had there's probably four or five guys on the roster over the past few years from that high school, starting with uh, Nick Carrera and Chris Henry back about three years ago, quarterback in, uh, uh, again, starting cornerback, Nick Carrera. First and 10 RPI at the WPI 46. 10.45 to go first half, 7 nothing. WPI leads. He had some speed. Herman out of the shotgun. Gets Caswell as he was cutting back behind the line of scrimmage. On the end around, Caswell is out at the 39. 
And there was some good blocking because he had room to completely reverse the field on that and picked up a gain. It's a great, that was a good play, well executed. And I think we saw Daryl Brown out there making a the block there on the edge playing tight end. Gain of seven, second down and three. Or was that, uh, they get the numbers confused, and that was just Ray Davis making a great block from the wide receiver position. I believe that was Ray Davis. It was Ray Davis. I got excited. Daryl Brown will come in at tight end at times, though. You're having a bad numbers game. Costa on the carry on second down, looking for the first down. He's close, still on his feet. Caught from behind, but he's 2 to 36, and I think he might have that first down. And that's what you got to like about Nick Costa. He gets you bonus yards. Yards after contact, one of the best runners in the league. He gets hit, you bounces off, or he drives through a tackle, and he'll get you a couple extra inches to add up over the course of the game. Really good, low, solid running back. Third down and one. RPI with the I formation. Herman on the keeper, and he's got the first down as he gets across the 35. See, there's a good third and short. I like that play call. Nicely done. And an interesting point of note, we see Ed Manning coming in and playing tight end on that play. Ed Manning was a starting center two years ago for that Jimmy Robertson left, left led team that went 8-1 and one and won the ECAC Northeast Bowl. That would be Atlantic, wasn't it? Oh, East 1 ECAC ball. Come on, man. Herman on first down as throws to the right. McCarthy in the flat. He drops it. Couldn't hold on to it. It's incomplete. 9-13 to go here. First half of play. And it's WPI 7, RPI nothing. And, you know, normally I might make the comment that he might still be reeling from that fumble slash interception at last play. But Pat McCarthy's a senior. He's a leader on this team. I don't really think things are getting into his head too much. I think he's too mature for that to happen here. I think we'll see a great performance from him for the rest of the game. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass on first down. Herman to the flat once more. That's complete to Caswell. He's got it. Caswell to the 30, still on his feet. And he's down to the 25. Looks like another first down. He's got afterburners. You see him catch the ball and just accelerate up the sideline and really take it off. A lot of speed for this engineer offense. RPI engineer offense. I'm not going to get it all day. You have to stick with the schools on this one. I apologize to those of you out in Radio Land if I am confusing you. Now they're going to measure on the far sideline. That's where the sticks are, away from us here in the press box. That's the east side of the field. Maybe they don't have the first down. That was a little premature. It was close. About two inches they need for the first down. So that'll make it third and short. I'm, I'm good for another quarterback sneak on this play. <laughs> Still a great catch and acceleration from Austin Caswell. Again, that's still that bubble screen play where he gets a couple blockers. He was coming out of a bunch of formations. So he had two guys in front of him. Takes a little delayed step, moves to the outside. Two of the receivers go downfield to make blocks. He's going to catch the ball. And it's kind of like a running play. It's kind of, it functions kind of like a sweep. But it gets the ball out to the corner a little bit quicker than you could with a running back out of the backfield. Third and short for RPI, as it's 9.03 to go in the first half, 7-0 WPI on top. They scored on their first drive, moved the ball well at times after that, but not able to get into the red zone after that first drive. RPI eschews the double tight end, backs in the I formation. They'll go with four wideouts on this third and short. Herman throws wide open at the five, Ooh. and that's complete for a first and goal to Burpo. Flag down. A big hit after that. They're not going to flag that hit, are they? I mean, that was a monster hit. He really laid the lumber as Burpo got hit. But I'm not going to say it's excessive roughness or anything. That's a good, solid football hit. Are we going to get a replay on the Jumbotron? I would like to see a replay on the Jumbotron. It could be he went underneath. Underneath. I'd really like to see that hit again. Flag on the play. They're calling a personal foul on the play. 
I can't hear what the officials... Once the crowd started, I heard him say personal foul. Oh. And after that, I, I lost it because the crowd started cheering. It had to be on the hit. But... The... It could be he went underneath the chin. Ah. I don't know. That, that's 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 playing football right there. I, you jar the receiver. I mean, great catch by Stephen Burpo, but that was a fantastic hit from the WPI defense. Half the distance to the goal and a penalty. First and goal from the two. RPI with the double tight end formation. Backs in the eye. Herman. The give on first down is to Wood. Looking to turn the corner on the left side. And does he get the pylon? No. Out of bounds at the Very one. Close. Wood is out at the one for a gain of one. Trying to make the sweep there and just get the ball on the inside of the pylon. A little bit short. Honestly, from this distance, why don't we let's see Mike Herman have a quarterback sneak and just see if he can't burl his way into the end zone. That works for me. Yep. I mean, you're 6'5", 240 pounds. Just kind of push people out of the way. Make some space for yourself. Excuse me. Second down. Same formation. Herman fakes the handoff. Play action throws incomplete. It'll be third down. Don't like that play call. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. You're down that yeah. close. Run. 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 Fourth down. <laughs> Maybe run again. I'm a huge fan of just running the ball. But then again, WPI knows that, so you want to catch them on the play fake. But I understand they know that, but you're so close. They, 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 weren't, they weren't confused at all. They were in Herman's face the whole time. He was lucky to get that ball off. Third and goal at the one for RPI. Herman brings his team to the line. We're going to get the play we want at this point, Kirk? What do you think? I don't know. I want to see the bush push from Matt Wood here. Wood is the tailback. Herman looking for the corner, looking for McCarthy, and does he have Got it? Got him. Yes, touchdown to McCarthy in the corner. It's WPI 7, RPI 6. The fade ball there. That's a very nice play there. Pat McCarthy Sr. had a couple of bad plays. Now he comes out and catches a touchdown pass. Well thrown, well executed. I really wanted to see Mike Herman burl his way over somebody in the end zone. I like hard hitting football. After last week, RPI needs to put some points on the board and stay in the game. It's a well-executed play there. Nilsson on to try the extra point. Snap, spots down, kick is up. Kick's got more than enough distance. 7.52 to go here in the first half of play, and we are all tied at 7. How would you like to be the guys up on the platform filming from the end zone when the kick comes through? I always think they're going to get duffed with the ball. We have no nets here at the East Campus Stadium, but we do on the, on no, the arena No, no, there's side. a net over there. There is a net. It's, a, it's below the guys. It's below me. the guys up on the, uh, what would you call that thing? I don't know. It, it, it just extends them up into the air. Oh, jeez. It's, it's not my bailiwick. But, but, a, but a note on the fade ball. This is an interesting, this is the intricacies of throwing the fade into the end zone is that you have two options. And if the quarterback knows what he's doing, it's very hard to defend because depending on, depending on how the defender's playing the receiver, if he's playing him up front, you're going to throw the fade back to the pylon. He's going to catch it over the shoulder. If the defender is behind playing the fade, you throw what's called a behind the head ball. And if you have a good receiver, he's just going to come around and you throw a tight, you know, donut on a rope type pass, you know, fast. What am I thinking? You gun it in there and you throw it right at the back of his head, he's going to turn around and snatch it for the touchdown. So the behind the head ball is much more difficult to catch, but if you know those two options and the quarterback and the receiver are on the same page, very hard to defend that play. And well executed by Mike Herman and Pat McCarthy. Donuts on a rope? Like a scram jet engine. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Nilsson boots the ball away on the kickoff, taken at the 19 to the 25. And I think that's McClune on the return. Down at the 26. Yep. I am still curious as to what that penalty was. We will find out at halftime and let you know. We'll see what we can do about that. No guarantees. The WPI starts out at their own 26. As we are all tied up here at 7. McCauley out of the shotgun with four wide receivers. McCauley looks left, ball's tipped, it goes incomplete. Close, I think uh, 
put one of those defensive linemen, got his mitts up in the air and batted that one down. Hassel could have turned and tried to get to it, but he didn't have enough time. Saw it and everything, but just wasn't in the... Luck wasn't with him. He had a chance, but Luck wasn't with him on that one. Still a good play. Second and 10, WPI from the 26. On the option, it's a, oh, oh, sorry, inside handoff, McClune takes it, and he's out to the 33. Uh, note on that last scoring drive, uh, started, excuse me, let me make sure I have this correct. Well, Pat's playing computer games. Down there yes. on the field, it's <laughs> third down and three from the 33. To give us to McClune. Tries to run off the right side of the line, and I think he's got the first down. He's out near the 31. That's where he had to get to. Still getting that push up front from the WPI offensive line. Right. Issue. That play didn't look so good if yeah. you just looked at the players. But then when you notice the push that they're getting, yep. it gets them the first down. All right, a note on that last scoring drive. Started on the 37-yard line, time of possession, 3 minutes and 47 seconds for RPI. 11 plays, 63 yards, ending with that touchdown pass from Mike Herman to Pat McCarthy. First and 10 at WPI at their own 36. 6.45 to go here, first half, tied at 7. McCauley rolls left, throws, and throws that away. Cole, the intended... There was a man in the area on the far side, and he was out of yeah. the tackle box, so it's not I'm not grounding. sure you could see him. He had a face full of D. Brown in his face. <sighs> and I was trying to get the stats. I couldn't find them, but I know D. Brown has had probably two sacks in the Endicott game. I'm not sure from the Utica game, but he is always back there in the face of the quarterback. If there is an RPI individual sack record, it certainly looked like it might be in jeopardy for the season for Daryl Brown. Second and ten. Champagne on the carry, keeps on his feet, stays on his feet to the 40, and finally the defense stops him as he just after he gets a little bit across the 40, and WPI has a third down coming up. He just kept chugging, man. I mean, that's what you taught us running, man. Just keep your feet moving, short, choppy steps, and you get those extra yards that way. But the defense is also taught the same thing, and they get underneath you and put you on the ground. Third down and six, ball at the 40. Single wide out to each side, two backs. McCauley fakes the handoff, play action, looking downfield, throwing, oh! Legs got tripped up. And Nick Bean was the intended receiver, and he got his legs tripped up with the defensive back. They both went down, the real inadvertent contact, and it's fourth down for WPI. It was Kevin Frame on the coverage, and I'd say it's, it's a decent break for RPI because it looked like the guy had to step on him. Pass was a little bit overthrown, it seems, but there was definitely catchable ball. But again, they're going to say it's inadvertent, legs got twisted, and not pass interference. If you're an RPI fan, you like that call. If you're a WIPI fan, you're not really happy with that call. On fourth down, WPI will punt the ball away. Booted. Caswell signals fair catch and takes it at the 27 and goes out of bounds. 5.43 to go here in the first half of play. All tied at 7. What would you like to see from RPI at this point is a nice long drawn out drive ending with a score, go in at the half with a lead and get the ball back coming out. I'd like to see them take the clock off, take some time off the clock here and run the football effectively. And so far, a much better day for RPI this half. Defense has been playing fairly well. Again, bending, not breaking, giving up just one score. And RPI moving the ball pretty well in that last drive and ending it with a touchdown. So let's see if we can't keep with this some momentum here. Again, for the RPI fans out there. First down, Herman to Costa. Goes to the right, cuts up field now, and he's down at the 33. Jack Mulhern on the stop for WPI. That's a good six to seven yard scamper there from Nick Costa. Call it six, second and four for the RPI engineers. Two 
two backs, three wideouts. Costa takes the carry, sees nothing straight ahead. To the right, now to the 35, and RPI has the third and two. That was a tough run there to pick up those extra yards. He had nothing going up ahead. He was getting met behind the line of scrimmage. Made a cut, made the guy miss, comes outside, and comes up the field to pick up those two yards. Third and two. Ball on the right on the 35 for RPI. 440 to go in the half. Tied at seven. We've got a new uh, running back coming to the game. Colton Callahan, number 34, playing fullback. Tacosta once more. He's close to a first down. Looks like he's a yard shy, actually. They'll say his knee went down at the 36, and he needed to make the 37. And RPI has fourth and one. And Grubbs is coming out to punt, it appears. Yeah. No need to be extra aggressive here, especially when you're on your own side of the field. Matt Wood is one of the up man. He is the up man for RPI on this play, so a fake is possible. I do like that direct snap fake. If you can pull it off, it's awesome. Grubbs is back at his own 22. Grubbs gets the snap, and he'll kick the ball away. High spiral, good hang time, and a fair catch is signaled and taken at the 41. 3.39 to go here in the half, tied at 7. And one of the interesting plays of the game, again, doesn't show up big in the stat book, was that when Daryl Brown picked up the fumble and then fumbled it in the end zone. It wound up being almost moot in the effect, but that was such a chance for, the, for RPI to get a score there and really pick up some momentum. And we'll see if that doesn't come back to be one of the more defining plays of the game. McCauley brings his team out, first and 10 at their own 41. Two wideouts right, two backs. McCauley fakes the hand, nope, actually he didn't execute the handoff and it's a pickup of two. He's really good with that. Yeah, like I said, you can't watch the ball. You know, um, it does remind me of, and, and that's not making it saying that the offense is similar because the concepts are completely different, but if you're a Troy area person, you remember the Lansingburg football teams, and they run that double wing where it's that same, you can't watch the ball and you don't know who has it. Um, this is an option offense. It's a little bit different, but it has that same kind of aspect of you don't know who has the ball. On second down, pass to the left is that complete yes out at the 48. Mello had the carry, or pardon me, Champagne had the carry on first down, and I believe less on the reception there on second down. Balls out to the 48, third and three for the WPI engineers. Three to go here in the first half of play. Oh, you give me a face like that. It, it's a similar offensive concept. I didn't even, oh, no. The face was, I am I live in the area, but since I don't follow high school sports, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Lansingburg, man. <laughs> really, really good teams for about five or six years. On third down, run straight ahead, big hole. And that's a first down for Mello. Mello stays on his feet, and he stumbles a little bit, and he's down at the 39. And those holes, I mean, it's... I, it's a great push by the WPI offensive line, but it's also created by the fake. I mean, we thought we thought McCauley had it. He, he gives it, and he actually hands it off, but he carries out a great option fake. He needs to get hit. I'll explain that in a second. McCauley has four wideouts, three on the right here on second down, or pardon me, first and 10 at the 40 of RPI. Tied at seven with 214 to go in the first half. McCauley has one back. McCauley goes right, now goes left. McCauley stays on his feet. He's to the 35. Yep. McCauley's not getting hit enough. That, that's my problem. When you, If you're going to play option football, you, or if you're going to defend it, you need, like I said, you need to be hitting the quarterback and hitting him hard on every play. If he's carrying out an option fake, he is not running, and you can believe that he had the football. You can take a shot, and you can hit him, and that's what you need to do is you need to punish the quarterback on every play if they're going to play option football and make him not want the ball. It's a psychological as well as it is that chess game. You make him not want the ball. Second down and five. McCauley looks to throw. Complete pickup of one at best to Trevor Dunn. As he grabbed it at the 34, but he had two engineers from RPI right on him. Again, defense is stiffening up a little bit here for RPI. They had the one bad drive was the opening drive. Yeah. 
One ten left to go in the half. A, if you want to look at the clock, this was a 2 o'clock start, yes. You can go ahead and look at the clock, and this game is moving fast. Yes, it is. Well, that's what happens when you run the football. WPI has been keeping it on the ground, and they've been possessing the ball most of the game. Third down and about four. McCauley stays in to throw. That's complete for a first down to the 25. To the 20. Trying to stiff arm a guy. Now rolling and going out of bounds is Trevor Dunn. And WPI has the ball down to the 16. And WPI will take a timeout with 47 and a half seconds left in the first half. And that was a very well-run route by Dunn. He came over the middle on the, about a 15-yard dig route, a little bit shorter than that. And he found that hole between the two safeties in the cover two zone. And he, and he knew, bet, knew well enough to sit there and wait for the ball. Again, against his own defense, you've got to find the holes and sit there. You just can't stay on the move. I mean, you're taught, like in Peewee's, never stop running when you're, you know, playing football. But against, like, a cover two set, you find those holes between the zones, and that's where you got to sit. McCauley found him down the field on the dig route. Very well done play. The passing of WPI, granted they're a very, very ground and pound team with the, op with the option. That's one of the more important parts of their offense because it keeps the defense honest and makes those fakes more effective. If you can throw and you pick up... You know, maybe, maybe it's 100 yards and you're not a 300-yard passing team, but the fact that you're capable of doing that and you have a quarterback that can run and throw, again, there's, there's, there's no scheming against a defense like that because you can't give them something. And you, you, just, you, know, you can't say, oh, we're going to take away the run and make them beat us through the air. Well, they'll beat you through the air. And you just have to play solid, fundamental, committed defense, and you can't watch the football. First and 10 WPI at the 16 of RPI. 47 and a half seconds left here in the first half. Tied at seven. McCauley out of the shotgun. The handoff is to Mello, straight ahead. Stopped at the 15. Clock continues to run, 40 seconds left in the half. McCauley wants his line to get back into position. It's a second down and nine. Called a gain of one, 30 seconds left in the half. Four wide out set. RPI jumps, they get back, option play, McCauley has it, pitches to Mello, Mello's down, no, nope. he'll be stopped at the 15, WPI needs to think about taking a timeout now, they will. And again, here, here's my point of dissension, Colin King was chasing McCauley on that play, and he had the quarterback assignment, and someone else had the pitchman assignment, when McCauley pitched the ball, he turned from McCauley to chase the guy with the ball, and you think that makes sense, right, I'm going to go chase the guy with the football, no, you hit the quarterback, he pitches the ball, you still drill him into the turf because you're going to make him start pitching the ball earlier and earlier and earlier through the course of the game if you continue to punish him. And that's how you've got to play the option game. If he's comfortable with the football, you're not doing your job defensively. As I mentioned, WPI taking the timeout, their second of this first half. There's only 16.8 seconds left in the half. They have a third and nine and one timeout remaining. I'd have to think if you're WPI, you're trying for the end zone on this play, and after yeah. that, you kick something. And, and it's either in the end zone or incomplete or out of bounds, and then, yeah, you bring out the kicker. So they still have the timeout well, left. They still have the timeout, so it doesn't even matter. You can take... They can still... They execute. can run the ball in this yes. situation if they wanted to. They can execute a running play and then stop the clock, so they're in pretty good position with respect to that, and they only have two downs to play with, so if they don't get the first down on this play, it's obvious they're going to kick. Ball's at the 15-yard line for a third and nine for WPI. Tied at seven here, nearing the end of the first half. It's going to be a big play here. Mello out of the shotgun. Three wideouts. Rolls right, looking downfield, throws incomplete. He had been along the near sideline, not enough for a first down. I don't know if he would have made a first down. So with 12.2 seconds left, the field goal team comes out for WPI. Yeah, he had a little bit of room in front of him to work with, and he was upset that he didn't get a chance to work at it. But I think that would have been well covered, and you would have just we'd be kicking from the other hash at this point. Cody Becker will try a 32-yard field goal from the left hash mark. He's a right-footed kicker. Snap, spots down, McCauley's spot, and then the kick, and it's up, and no good. Missed it to the left. A little bit off. This will be a big point here. Now, I'm interested to see how Coach King and Coach Ceres handle this situation. Nine seconds left. Do have timeouts. Do you take one shot at it? No. You need a momentum going in the locker room here. I feel like 
Mike Herman's got a huge arm. Again, that's a gutsy call. Probably not your more fundamental call. You're probably going to see them come out and take a knee here. But I don't believe I'm seeing that personnel grouping. Nope, I am. You are. They're going to take a knee. By rule, the ball came out to the 20. Herman, with his backs around him, he'll come back and take a knee. And the teams will go into the locker room tied at 7 after one half of play. 30-minute football game coming up. RPI will get the ball to start out the second half. It was looking real good for WPI after the first drive. They scored their seven on the first drive of the game. RPI has shut them down mostly after that. That drive, that last one by WPI was only the second time they got into the red zone. WPI making their way across the field. We are, the press box is above all the locker rooms here, so they have to go to the other side. A couple other points of notes. I did a little bit of research. Uh, that was the third sack of the season already for Daryl Brown that we had in the first half. And uh, note on that penalty, I did find out when Stephen Burpo had caught that pass and he, we talked about that jarring hit, it was a personal foul for helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact on the hit. Uh, questionable from my perspective, but I guess that is the rule now. The NCAA and all their sports are cracking down on hits to the head. Every sport they're cracking down on that. Yes. It's just another football thing. We see that in hockey as well where there is heavy emphasis on contact to the head in hockey. And that set, that uh, fumble for Pat McCarthy did go down as a fumble. Mike Herman, 8 of 10 for 61 yards and a touchdown on the day. No interceptions. RPI gets their kick return, return team out there as they will receive the ball to start this second half of play. WPI kicking off. WPI won the toss and elected to take the ball as the game started. It'll be RPI going left to right, WPI, nope. RPI going right to left, WPI left to right across your radio dial in this third quarter of play. That is WPI headed towards the East Campus Arena, East Campus Gymnasium, what is it called? That's the arena, I believe. The this arena, the okay. The East Campus Arena. Naming rights not sold. Yes. A la New Meadowland Stadium. That'll be the New Meadowland Stadium for a while. Quarterback sacks. Season, uh, okay, here we go. I was looking at some of the um, 14 sacks is the record for a season at RPI. It was Mike Sosi in 1991. And Wood takes the kick at the 8-yard line to the 15-20. Tripped up nicely. Very nice tackle as he was running along the 20 by Manny Cambra. And he doesn't get as many yards as he thought he would. Mike Susie was a sack monster, had 34.5 career sacks from 90 to 91 and 93 to 94. Injury year or maybe took a year off, who knows. But that's the mark that we would like to see Darrell Brown get to at this point. Three already on the season, potential for many more with this talented defensive end for RPI. First and 10, RPI back at their own 21, they'll call it. Herman out of the shotgun on first down. Looks left, keeps the ball himself, stopped. As he gets back, he just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Not much doing on that play. Again, an attempted quarterback draw, but not much push coming up from the offensive line. Jack Mulhern on the stop for WPI. RPI puts Three left, one right on second down and 10 from the 21. Tied at seven here, just starting out the second half of play. Herman out of the shotgun, looks left, completes the Caswell to the 25, 26, 27, 28. He's out at the 28, picks up seven. RPI has third and three. Sorry. Make it the 29, third and two. I am being bad. Texting while on the air. Important social scenes here at RPI. Really? Yeah. I required immediate, <laughs> immediate response. I can't believe you used that phrase and you actually are serious about it. <laughs> Three wideouts on the right, one on the left. I'm stunned. Herman out of the shotgun, stumbles, stays on his feet, now throws, and he throws it into the WPI bench area on third down and two and RPI is sending grubs out. It's in the vicinity of Pat McCarthy again. You know, 
I'm tired, and that just sparked me right up. <laughs> the fact that you said that in all seriousness. Important social scenes at RPA. Oh, my gosh. I am wide awake now. <laughs> Fourth down. Grubbs is back to punt for RPI. <laughs> Matt Sear is at his own 31 awaiting this kick. Good snap, balls away, end over end. Sear runs up, takes it at the 39, gets hit, gets away from that, stays on his feet to the 45, and Sear is down at the 48. Nice run back after a difficult run to get over to the ball. 13.59 to go here in the third quarter, tied at seven. It was Ryan Hunsinger that was in a position to really make a tackle there, and just the returner just broke away from him. Flag on the play, was that, did they touch the kicker? I wasn't looking. No, holding against RPI. Figures. They'll put that at the end of the run, so the return gets them out to the 48, and now the penalty will move WPI to start out at RPI's 42. One of the rules changes that has come out recently is that penalties on kicks, mm -hmm. it used to be that would have to be assessed and then a re-kick. Now they yes. allow the, the receiving team to assess the penalty after the kick to move the game along. And it also gives a benefit sometimes, most of the time, to the returning team. Don't they have the option? Or no, they don't have the option of a re-kick anymore. No, I believe they do. Okay. I believe they have that option. Now we have an official timeout on the field. Again, 13.59 to go in the third quarter. Tied at 7. Official timeout? Or? No, it's an official timeout. Joe Kane wants to talk to the referee for today's game. And again, that is David Scott wearing the white hat. Probably looking for a clarification on that penalty. Yes, I would assume so. Everything's going to stay as it is. First and 10, WPI at the RPI 42-yard line. Tied at 7 here in the third quarter of play. WPI has not won this game, I believe, since 1996. 96. That's something I probably should have looked up. It actually should be here. Yes. Look at probably the media guy. McCauley takes a right snap down. out of the shotgun. Drops straight back. Throws over the middle. That's complete to the 20. Down to the 17 for Josh Less. First and 10 for the WPI engineers at the 22-yard line. 13.40 to go in the third quarter, tied at seven. Media guide, my friend, media guide. The media guide, I'm looking at the, the game notes, it should be here. Well, maybe it's not. On the option play, McCauley pitches to Mello. Mello escapes one tackle, stays on his feet, gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe yes. a yard beyond that. WPI's last victory came on October 5th, 1996. And what was the final score of that game? Rensselaer, RPI, 13-10 on 86 field. And since then, RPI has won 13 straight transit trophy games. And they lead the series all time, 55 to 43 with five ties between. At the 16, second down and nine. Champagne, a lot of room on the left side. To the 10, Champagne to the five. On his feet, hits the Did pylon. No, they'll say he stepped out. He stepped out short of the goal line. About to three, actually. They're putting him out at the three. He was looking to dive again. If he could just get that ball on the inside of the pylon, six points. 2003, the Transit Trophy game saw the trophy being broken in the press box. Really? Yes. We were on the air calling the game, and there was this loud thump. And we turned around, and the guy's picking up the other half of the trophy, <laughs> holding one half, holding the base in one hand and the Transit in the other hand. It was an RPI guy that broke it? No, it was WPI. It was at oh, WPI's were, facility, the old press box at WPI. They were just ticked, I guess. First and goal at the two. Officially, they'll call a flag comes out. Penalty against WPI. This will back them yeah, up on this first down play. Here. Ball back to the seven. For second and, well, first to go, pardon me, from the seven. They get the down back after the penalty. Uh, you, get, you can hear the band from the student body. You gotta love that in the big place. The 
Looks like McClune in the backfield along with Champagne. McCauley fakes the Champagne, escapes one man, throws end zone over McClune and incomplete. That was close. That was an interesting play. He fakes it, then fakes the run, steps back. I think it was a, one of those run pass option plays and McCauley couldn't decide whether he wanted to run or pass it. That was first down after the penalty. They made it first and goal from the seven. Now it's second and goal, just a little bit beyond the seven for WPI. 12.06 to go here in the third quarter, tied at three. WPI with their first possession of the second half, scored on their first possession of the first half. McCauley out of the shotgun. McLoon takes the ball, looking right, turns it towards the goal line, and he gets it out to about the three. Well, oh, they get the two. Tried to stick the ball out to the one, but the referee isn't, the officials aren't buying that. And it is third and goal from the two now for WPI. Champagne laid a hell of a block in that play. Completely depleted the guy who was blocking to set up and make some room there. Again, didn't get it in for the touchdown, but that was the highlight of the play for me. I'd like to see a running back get excited about making a block. Third and goal from the two and a half. They'll keep Champagne and McLuhan in the backfield. Single wide out, each side, fumble! And McCauley goes back and covers it at the nine. It'll be fourth down. Well, it's interesting to see what the play was gonna be there. Because that can happen, again, when it's on an option read, the ball does go into a shared possession between the quarterback and the running back and the handoff, and it's not just a, it's just not a strict handoff. You're actually riding him for a short distance if you're the quarterback, so you have the ability to leave or pull it. So it's a little bit more complicated of a transition there, and I think it might have been McCulley was looking to pull it, either throw or follow in on the fumble. Back goal to try a field goal. This will be a 25-yarder from the right hash mark. Snap, spot, kick is up. And the kick is good. So with 10.42 to go here in the third quarter of play, WPI takes a 10-7 lead. So, yeah, it is, a, it is a more complicated situation than it would appear than a strict handoff if you were running, say, a pro set and an I-formation I, I offense where you just hand the ball and you get the heck out of the way. It, it's an option in every play. And I think what was happening there was McCauley was looking to pull. And he was either looking for a fade route in the opposite corner or to follow the two runners right back up the middle on a quarterback designed run. WPI scored on their first possession of the first half, and now they've scored on the first possession of the second half, only three this time instead of seven before. RPI has not led in this game. They trailed seven nothing, tied it, and now trail 10-7. And again, they have not led. The only time they've led all year was for the entire second half at Endicott. Yes. That's the only time RPI has led this season. Never were able to lead last week when they lost 42-21 to Utica. Interesting kickoff lineup here. Nope. Uh, it was the kickoff huddle. The kickoff? I, I don't see that too often. But you'll see some teams that'll come right out of the kickoff huddle, right into the kickoff, and not spread out like this. Beckel just kicked the field goal. Boots it away. Low kick. Covered by an up man, and he's down at the 28. So that's a zero yard return. RPI takes the ball there. And I believe that was Matthew Day on the cover up, not really a return. But again, when it's short like that, that's what you're taught is just to catch the ball and get down. RPI's first possession was a three and out in the second half. The defense, or pardon me, the offense for RPI scored, didn't put any points on the board against Utica last week. Had a poor performance in the second half. Three to the right for Herman. Costa is the running back for RPI. First and 10 from their 28. Herman takes a snap, gives to Costa. Cuts inside, Costa's down at the 30. Just a big pile there. It's been tough to find room up the middle for RPI in today's game. Well, and that's one of the dangers of having a very good running quarterback in this situation. Is, is they're, they're stacking the box here, and they really are testing RPI to throw the ball downfield more. And again, it's a four wide receiver set, in this case a three, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight guys up there. Let's call it seven and a half. Herman on second down throws. That's complete to McCarthy. Oh. He's brought oh. down at the 42. There flag comes out on the tackle. McCarthy came up and was looking around for the flag. 
but he didn't see that the field judge had thrown it. Oh, he took a little time to throw it. I could have called it from here, man. That was a blatant face mask. He almost lost his head on that play. Referee comes up to talk to the field judge. The, the line judge and the head linesman who had the best view of it didn't make the call. It was the field judge who made the call. I guess it doesn't matter who throws the flag as long as you get it. Ball was out to the 41, and 15 yards will be tacked on to that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I was expecting the flag right away. Pat McCarthy was looking at his ear hole there for a second. Ball goes to the WPI 43. Big pass play, then a costly mistake by WPI, and RPI has got it first and 10 at the WPI 43. 10.05 to go here, third quarter of play. 10-7, WPI leads. Again, three receivers bunched together on the right side for RPI. Costa, handoff, goes left, turns the corner, and he's out along the near sidelines at the 39, 38, 39. And I love to watch Nick Costa win the football in space. Number 31 for WPI, Graham Litos comes a step up and makes a tackle, and Nick Costa just trucked right over him. Just hard runner down the field. He's fast and powerful in... He chooses to be powerful more than fast, and I prefer that. He, instead of running around somebody, he just runs through him. Good run by Nick Costa there. Gain of four on that play. Second down and six. Be Wooden Costa in the backfield this time. Costa tries to follow Wood to the left. Can't turn the corner. He's out at the 40. Loses a yard. That was the same play twice. Oh, you figure it worked once. Why not call it again? Well, they'll give him the benefit of the doubt on this one. He's close to the line of scrimmage. Called it. No gainer, third down and six. RPI checking out the play on the sidelines. I'd like to see a comeback route near side to Ray Davis for a first down right here. That's what I would like to see. Davis has had a quiet year so far. Four wideouts, cost in the backfield on third down. Looking towards Davis and thrown behind him. Mix up on that play. And that was the play call I wanted. I got what I wanted and it didn't work. Now I feel like a jerk. No, it looked like it should have been a comeback to the outside. Ray Davis stepped and turned inside instead of coming back towards the sidelines. Herman was leading him outside, so who there was, was wrong? I'm not sure. They started talking to each other as they came to the sidelines about who was supposed to be where. There was yes. a mix up. And generally, I, I think it was probably supposed to be the outside. That's where the opening was, and that's generally how you're going to run a comeback in that situation is towards the sidelines. Ball's at the 39 for fourth and six. Grubbs is out there with the punt team, and it's a direct snap to Matt Wood. Wood takes off, and he'll get caught short of the first down, and RPI turns the ball over on downs. William Alves, I think I've got the name right. Um, Alves. 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 Alves, we'll call it Alves. He makes the tackle, and RPI turns it over on downs at their own, uh, pardon me, at WPI's 37-yard line. He got a rickshaw ride for about three or four yards there, though. That <laughs> would just dragging him up the field, trying to <laughs> drag him for seven yards to get the first down. I like that play, maybe not that situation. But you got to try something to swing the momentum here. First and 10, WPI. They lead 10-7. McClune on the carry on first down. Picks up about seven. There's 8.35 to go here in the third quarter of play. And a note on the rushing stats. McClune, seven attempts for 27 yards. Uh, McCulley, nine for 30. And Mello, 10 for 73, averaging 7.3 yards a carry. That's a good day. Ball at the 44, second down and seven, or pardon me, three, they gain seven, second down and three for WPI. As McCauley's operating out of the shotgun. Two backs, handoff, crawling for two yards is Mello. Well, that'll bring the average down a little bit. We've seen the defense stiffen up a little bit more here for RPI. The offense is staying consistent with their play calling, WPI, I mean. It's still being very effective, though. They haven't been shut down. Third down and one for WPI. 
at their own 46. And it's kept by McCauley after a fake handoff. He's got the first down into the RPI side of the field, and he's down at the 43. Two Ooh, flag comes out. Flag comes out later. This could be against RPI. The WPI lineman, lineman was clapping his hands. This was, if it's against RPI, it's totally away from the play. Yeah. Let me take this opportunity. Uh, I will wait until after we decide what the penalty here is. We are going to mark it off. It is against RPI. Get a personal foul. Had number 41. Something it must have been a hit away from the ball. Yes, Jacob it was. Myers. Oh, it had nothing to do with the play. That was a stupid penalty. Nothing to do with the play. Ball goes now 15 yards, tacked on to the end of the run. Balls at the RPI 28 for WPI. First and 10, 7:05 to go here in the third quarter. WPI leading 10-7. McCauley out of the shotgun, hands off. Nice run to the 22. Such a good handoff, I had no idea who yeah. Mello had to carry. Had now, let me take this opportunity to beat that dead horse named Assignment Football once again. This, that last run on the option, McCauley was able to make a slight fake on the pitch that got the defense moving towards the pitch man and it created a lane. If you have Assignment Football and your job is to hit the quarterback, whether or not he's got the ball or not, you're going to make that tackle. Get McCauley out of the shotgun here, motion right side, snap. Handoff, fake, looking deep. McCauley looking deep, running with the ball along the far sideline. He's got the first down, and he's down to the 13. Again, beating. If your job is to hit the quarterback, whether he's got the ball or not, you're going to make that tackle. Because it doesn't matter if he, if he stops to fake, <laughs> you've just made the defense's job easier if you try and fake it, because he's hitting you anyway. So he doesn't care if you got the ball or not. That's how you play option football, or op option defense, to be more specific. First down and 10 for WPI at the 13-yard line. Six minutes to go. Here in the third quarter, 10-7 WPI on top, driving for the end zone. McCauley giving signals to his squad. Now goes back into the shotgun. McClune takes the handoff left, trying to turn the corner, brought down at the 11. Tell you, Pat McCauley carries out a great fake. And you think, you know, if, you, if you're not a hardcore football guy, you say, well, what, what's, what's the point of that? Carrying, carrying out a great fake as a quarterback is one of the greatest tools that you can have. It makes the play action effective. It makes the draws effective. It makes this entire offense for WPI work. Second down, ball at the 11. Man in motion, McCauley out of the shotgun. Single wide outs each side. McCauley throws, end zone, touchdown! Ooh. Nice reception on the near side, and WPI takes a 16 to seven lead. And that was Mike Oliveri on the catch there. It was a little bit high at the jump. Well-placed ball, though. And now WPI is starting to pull away with this game. And they haven't won for the past 13 years. They're starting to feel pretty excited. Mike Oliveri listed as a linebacker on my roster. Yes, I have him on defense as well. Senior captain, but... I'm having trouble with the 6 there. and 8. It could be I've said Beam before when it was Oliveri. Extra point is up and good. And WPI with 5.08 to go here in the third quarter of play now has a 17 to 7 lead. And that moves us into the realm of a two-possession game. You really got to stiffen up on the defense. And we need, if you're an RPI fan, you need to get some points here. Keep this game close. Bring it back to a one-score game. And they're capable. They're capable. Mike Herman and this offense are capable of producing big plays and big points when they're needed. Haven't seen it yet this season. Maybe it's the time. And we've made the comment, this is a very talented offense for RPI. They haven't totally gotten it. They haven't totally clicked yet. When they do, if and when they start to click, it's going to be an impressive thing to see. RPI trailing by two scores. Again, the offense has not moved the ball well this second half, and they didn't do it well against Utica last second half. They're also not getting as many shots at it either. The ball control of WPI is definitely keeping them to a minimum number of possessions. Maybe special teams can get a big play. Beckel boots the ball away. 
Taken by Wood at the 11, he fumbles it, picks it up at the 12. Wood, 15, escapes one man, 20, and now pushed out of bounds at the 23. RPI will take over there. That could have ended a lot worse. Just miscues for RPI in the wrong situations here today. Okay. We've got uh, defense coming out. We've got the engineers preparing to come back out on offense here. Being let out, Pat McCarthy and Austin Caswell. Again, with a lot of speed on the team, Caswell, McCarthy, Burpo. Herman leads him out. Two running backs behind him. It's going to be in the I formation here. RPI on first and 10 from the 22. Herman fakes the handoff, looks to throw downfield. McCarthy was tied up with the defender. It goes incomplete as it went off McCarthy's hands. McCarthy had it and just couldn't hang on to it. Granted, he was in traffic. Would have been a very good catch. But you start digging into the playbook here. It hasn't worked that well. You start trying to find something that works. There were openings there in that play. Well set up patterns. Maybe you go back to it. Second down and 10, ball on the 22. Three wide outs in the far side, one on the left. Herman out of the shotgun. Throws, Caswell has it complete and forced out of bounds at the 24. And RPI is just having a tough time trying to move this ball. Canberra forces him out and it's third and long RPI. I mean, even on the effective drives for RPI right now, we haven't seen any big plays from this offense and that offense is built around creating big plays. I mean, I think the longest plays we've seen have been more 10 yards, 12 yards. We haven't seen any 20 yard plays yet today from RPI. Ball just short of the 25. Call it third and seven RPI. Four wideout formation once again for the RPI engineers. Costa's in the backfield. Herman takes a snap. Looking left. Now looks right. McCarthy's over there and it's oh. too far. McCarthy got a little turned around. Ball hit his hand, but he couldn't hold on to it and it's fourth down. He had a hand on it though. That's a catch he normally can make. I mean, he's one of the better wide receivers in the Liberty League. That's a catch he should have had and it was open. Good luck by Mike Herman on that play. Mike Grubbs out to punt the ball away on fourth down. High snap. Grubbs pulls it down, boots it away. Low kick. Taken at the 42, 45, 50, and down to the RPI 48 was Matt Sear. We had a shoestring pack tackle on that play from number 16 for RPI. That's Dustin Schultz, sophomore defensive back from East Brunswick, New Jersey. Very, very important tackle there, grabbing the legs of the returner. Otherwise, he had some room in front to really make a big play. 4.18 to go here in the third quarter play. 17 to seven WPI leads. They start out in RPI territory. Two of their three possessions this half have started out on RPI side of the field. Three wideouts, McCauley. Inside handoff on first down. This is a first down play as Mello is all the way down to the 30. They say big plays, man. They, they, they make the difference. I mean, that's part of the goals. I mean, Coach King has, I believe it's 13 commandments that'll, no, it's not 13, it's not that many. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. He, he, he has, <laughs> well, a, he has a That set. makes everybody. <laughs> he has a set number of commandments. It might be seven of goals that he has for his team, and big plays is one of them. On first down, the carry is by Champagne, gets hit a couple of times, stays on his feet nicely, and picks up six. Yeah, I think it's the seven commandments, and it's more big plays than the other team. Uh, the offense should score more than one, 21 points. The defense should give up less than 10. Uh, special teams plays more big plays, and special teams more big plays on defense. And there's a chart in the RPI locker room that tracks this for each game to see if they meet their goals or not. And it's a big deal on special teams, and it's a big deal about making big plays and keeping big plays for the team to a minimum. Second down and four. Ball is snapped. Mello takes the carry. Has something up front. Cuts left. He's got a first down as he gets to the 18-yard line. Time is going off this clock. I know I realize we're late in the third quarter, but RPI's offense isn't moving. WPI's offense is. It's already a two-score game, and this is looking bleak right now for RPI. The second half last week was a poor second half, and this second half isn't looking too good. And that, you know, that, that points to me, if you play a really great first half in the second half, 
it's either one of two things. Either the other team makes better adjustments than you did, or the other team is in better condition than you are. And I'm not sure what it is or what combination of those two it is right now for RPI, but it starts to look like a trend here that the second half has not been good. 17-7, to WPI leads on first down, another power carry. I think that's Mello again to the 13. Just stayed on his feet, got some push, and he picks up six. That's a good run. And that was, yeah, that was their Ernie Mello on the carry. Again, part of this triple-headed, um, four-headed running attack from WPI because you count McCulley into that equation. So any of these four guys can carry the ball in any of the plays. Second and four at the RPI 13. McCauley taking his time between plays. The clock is right now WPI's friend, RPI's enemy. Champagne on the carry. Uh, hits the line of scrimmage, picks up one to the 12. He gets held up and dropped there. Again, stiffing up for a little bit for the RPI defense. You hope to hold him to a field goal here. That'd be a victory. But it would still bring it into a three-possession game. Actually, no, it would not. It would be a two-possession game. You'd need two touchdowns and the extra points if you could hold him to a field goal here. So if you keep it a two-possession game, you're still in the running. If they get into the end zone here, you start being really in trouble. Third down and three. Yep, that's right, at the 12-yard line. Four-receiver formation. Oh, this is a direct snap to McClune, and he only makes it to the 10. I thought something looked a, re a little weird on that one. Trying a little trickery there, trying to catch him off guard. Didn't work. WPI sends out the field goal team. Now, he has missed one today. And has made one. It was a 25-yarder, I believe. This one will be yep. about that distance. Right down the center, too. From in between the hash marks, McCauley holds, puts the spot down, it's blocked! The ball's still alive. RPI races out and covers it at the 29. So WPI's drive gets nothing. RPI's got it at their own 29. Still 17 to 7, WPI leads. And that's the momentum swing that RPI needed. I don't know who got the block, but Kevin Frame was wise enough to get up the field and get down on the ball. He thought about picking it up, but he got down on it. Gives the offense a chance to move the ball. You try and pick it up there, you might mess it up. Good play by Kevin Frame. I didn't get the block. Did you get the block? No. Good, good team effort. You know, it doesn't even matter who gets their hands on the ball because they execute a field goal block correctly. You got to get some great push up front from your linemen, and your jumpers just got to get in the air and swat that thing down. There's a special teams big play. Coach King happy about that one. Two receivers each side for RPI. First and 10 at the 28, they'll say. Pass to McCarthy. That's complete. McCarthy's out to the 32. As we are late in the third quarter of play in WPI lead 17 to 7. Again, Brian Sarai is trying to get his senior captain back involved, get a couple, get the ball in his hands a little bit more, reassure his confidence because they're going to need him to play big down the stretch here. Herman with the same general formation as it's second down and about six. Throw over to the left is complete to Reggie Colas. But he stopped at the 30 for a loss of two. He had to turn around to make that catch, and he didn't have a lot of room. Steven Burpo was supposed to come down and make a block on that play, and he just did not make the block, and the defender was all over him before Colas could make the catch. That does it for the third quarter of play here at the East Campus Stadium in Troy, New York. After three quarters of the game is in the books, it's WPI 17 and RPI 7. Again, still a two-possession game here. You get a shot. You have 15 minutes. You have what you believe is a very good offense. Hasn't played like it yet, but the talent is there. We saw it last year early. And we know some of these players. We know Ray Davis, who's a fantastic receiver in the past. We know Pat McCarthy. They're capable. If you get the ball in their hands and we give them a chance, RPI can do a good job. And they can come back and win this game. They have the momentum. Great special teams. Big play. But a big third down coming up here. Just to know, Chris Robertson is the, the coach for WPI, replacing Ed Zaloom, who retired in the offseason. This is his first Liberty League game as a head coach. Uh, of course, his first season. Comes in with a record of one and two. One of those losses was to Salve Regina, which was his old team. Yeah. Mm. I always want to beat the old team. 
And again, the old team always wants to beat you. Fourth quarter about to get underway. It's RPI left to right, WPI right to left across your radio dial in this fourth quarter. RPI third and eight at their own 30. Four wideouts. Costa's in the backfield. Roberts, or probably Herman, takes a snap. <laughs> oh, and he throws <laughs> incomplete. Oh. Along the near side to Burpo, but he fell out of bounds, I think and Burpo it goes incomplete. Had the drag on that. I don't think he did. It looked to me like he was out. Robertson, and he's playing for the Peckling Blackhawks in Germany right now, or he was at least back last spring playing professional football overseas. Little nod to Jimmy Robertson for your quarterback for RPI. Fourth down and eight, and RPI sends out. Grubs to punt, and again, he boots it away. Sear takes that to 31, 35, 40. Caught by the ankles, and a penalty comes out later. Was this away from the play again? I didn't see anything wrong, I didn't see anything wrong with the tackle. Don't tell me that's helmet to helmet contact. It's going to be a block in the back on the return team. Sounds from the RPI band coming from the student section. You like to hear them warm up. Again, uh, pretty good attendance today uh, for the first RPI home game of the season. East Campus Stadium, again, huge 5,100 seats, so it always looks a little bit empty. Hope to fill it one day. On that positive note, it's first and 10 at WPI at the 29 yard line, their own 29. They'll start out this drive. McCauley out of the shotgun. Handoff on first down, Champagne to the 36, picks up almost seven. Yeah, again, those are the gains you don't want to see them be given up here. You gotta, you gotta limit them to three yards and, and under per carry if you're gonna play successful defense against a running team. Second down. Out of the shotgun once again, McCauley. McLoon takes the carry, grabbed by the shoulder, and he's taken down for a loss at the 32. And there is big Daryl Brown in the backfield causing a ruckus once again. Tell you what, this defense may be young and inexperienced. He is not. Again, as a leader, just needs to get his teammates to step up around him and start making plays. But definitely leading by example is Daryl Brown. Ball at the 33 for third down and six. RPI in a nickel set? No. 17 to seven, WPI is on top. RPI is stacking five guys in the line of scrimmage right now. Two backs, three receivers. McCauley rolls right, looking downfield, throws to the sideline, out of bounds. The receiver, I don't know if he got the ball or not, but by the time he came down, he was two or three yards out of bounds. He's trying to argue it, but. I don't see how he could have possibly had a foot down. Yeah. Again, McCauley had D. Brown all in his face again in that play. And good play by the RPI engineer's defense there to bring the stop here and get the offense the ball back with plenty of time on the clock to make something happen. WPI having to punt. Patiglio boots the ball away. Nice kick. McCarthy back to the 26 and has no opportunity to go anywhere. Again, trying to make something happen. Didn't want to call for the fair catch. Made the catch and was just covered right away. 13-17 to go here in today's game. And it's WPI 17, RPI 7. And bear in mind, it's a two-possession game for the RPI offense. So the clock, you start looking at it now even because you've got to get two solid possessions in here and you've got to get in the end zone twice if you want to win this football game. Costa in the backfield, four wideouts. Herman on first down, pump fakes 
to the left. Takes it himself to the 30. Herman to the 35, to the 40. Upended as he crosses the 45, and he's down at the 47. And I believe that's the first official rushing attempt from Mike Herman on the day. Believe it or not, and it's a good one. And he's been throwing the ball around very well today. And he's been very accurate as of as of the third quarter, was 13 of 19 for 86 yards, doing a very good job throwing the ball today. So they're stopping, packing the line and looking for him to run. He takes advantage of it and uses his legs to pick up a big gain there. Good play by Mike Herman. First and 10, RPI at the 42. 12.40 to go here in the game. RPI down by 10. Acosta takes the carry, right. Near sideline, pushed out at the 49. He got three. And he does not shy away from contest, uh, contact. I love this guy. He's getting met at the sidelines where another back might scamper out of bounds. He puts his shoulder down and tries to get another six, eight inches. That's what you want in your running back. Ball at the 50 for second down and six and a half. They'll say seven on the scoreboard. RPI needs some points. No second half points last week. Three in the first week of the season and none so far today. Herman to McCarthy on the left. McCarthy turns the corner. McCarthy's along the sidelines. Escapes one man. Gets away from a couple more. Now caught from behind at the 20. And now the big plays of offense start coming. Mike Herman going over to pick up his teammate. Stephen Burpah got laid out there making a block. But that was some great blocking that McCarthy got in front of him. Coming out of that bunch formation, was able to slip out in the screen. Got blocking from the two other receivers. Was able to get the corner and get out the sidelines for another big play. Things starting to click for the RPA engineers here. First and 10 at the 20 yard line for RPI. 11.50 to go in the game. Just a reminder, it's that time you are listening to WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium in Troy, New York. Kurt Sutton, Pat Nelson on the call for you today. RPI first and 10 at the WPI 20. Herman gives to Wood. Wood is stopped after a gain of one. I don't like to see him pull it take off on the run there. I want to see Mike Herman step up, be the leader of this team that we know he can be, and really take this team into victory. Pick up of one on that play, second down and nine. Saw McCarthy finally get another big play, get his confidence back. Herman, pump fakes right, now looks left, doesn't see anything, starts to run, now has to stop, throws end zone incomplete. Looking for McCarthy in the end zone, he had to go down to get the ball. I don't know if it was possible for him to catch that. You know what? I, I like what I'm seeing from Mike Herman here. You know, in, in another day in that situation where he was rushed, he would have just taken off and tried to make something out of that situation. This situation, he stops, resets himself, and makes a good attempt at getting a touchdown pass in that play. Again, thinking more like a quarterback and less like a running back as Mike Herman, and that's what we like to see in his development. Third down and nine at the 19-yard line. RPI puts three to the right. Herman rolls that way. Now looks left, now looks into the middle, into the end zone, McCarthy, oh, does he have he it? it? Does he have it? Is there a signal? No signal. There's no signal. Incomplete, they oh. say. Incomplete. No. They had to talk about it. There was no signal, and now they'll come out with incomplete. Oof. I'm not sure about that one. The crowd doesn't like it. McCarthy caught the ball. He had the ball. The he question is, does. was he are we in bounds? The jumbotron? I, I don't think we're going to see the Jumbotron, my friend. Why are we not going to see it? We need to see this on the Jumbotron. I, I don't have think the it's jumbotron. happening. I don't think it's happening. I it's going to start an uprise amongst the crowd because you'll see it. Yes, there's going to be an uprise. And, and, there, and there is no review in Division Three football, so there's no challenge, there's no booth official to go back and take a look at that. That was a catch by Pat McCarthy. 23, me, 33-yard field goal attempt here by Peter Nelson. The snap, the spot, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 10.41 to go here in the fourth quarter, RPI closes it to seven. It's now WPI 17, RPI 10. And you know, you still got points. And it's great to have a kicker in the situation that can put field goals in and you can trust. Great job by Pete Nelson there. Brings it back to a one possession game. You need your defense to get out there, get a good stop here, get the ball back. And the offense has got some click going on now. They can play. They're getting their confidence back. Again, should be a little upset about that bad call. Come back out there and score again. 
Again, a good pass by Mike Herman, a great catch by Pat McCarthy. They got to feel gypped on that play. RPI's kicking team getting out onto the field as they're going to boot the ball away. WPI, couple of blocked, missed field goal, blocked field goal. Two drives that got deep and they didn't get anything for it. And right now they've only got a one TD lead, 17 to 10. Nilsson is just about ready. Looks like McLoon and Mello back for WPI to receive this kick. Great Kicked kick away, defense. taken by Mello at the six. 10, 15, 20, 25, nope, 24. And that's what WPI will start out. And if you want to know how much Coach King cares about that third phase of the game as special teams, we just saw the starting running back, Nick Castor, running down the field on kickoff coverage. Again, very important that third phase of the game. Coach King hits on it a lot, and it's made a difference today. That block kick is a turning point of the game. If we see RPI come out on top, that's going to be the point of the game that we're going to remember. First and 10, WPI at the 24. On first down, Mello with the carry. Turns the corner left, almost breaks this one. He almost got free. The last person there was able to grab a hold of him and stop him. Good job of Colin King hanging on there. That was close. If Colin King didn't grab him, it might have been touchdown. Still a first down for WPI to the 35 yard line. 10-15 to go in today's game. 17-10 WPI leads. Again, need the defense. It's a big defensive drive here. And if you're WPI, you got to take some time off the clock here and hopefully end with a score. Defense! 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 On first down, handoff, inside handoff to Mello. And Mello is out to the 39 as we're under 10 to go in the game. Football left to be played here. Again, WPI is kind of built for this situation, a very run dominant offense, and that's what you want to do in this situation. Just keep the clock churning, take as much time off the clock as you can with this drive, and end it with a store, score. I mean, preferably a touchdown, but a field goal in this situation makes it a possession game again. Two men in the backfield, two wideouts on the left. McCauley keeps the ball, and now he is sacked as McCormick came in, and McCauley had nowhere to go, and that's a loss to WPI on second down. It's Jeff McCormick and D. Brown there on the sack. Again, he was looking to run, looking to go out on the option, stops and turn around, couldn't make up his mind about what he wanted to do in the option offense, and got dropped. It's a big play from the defense, and that's the need here, bringing up third and ten. Ball smack dab on the 35. Three wideouts. Nope, now they're going to send Mello in motion. He goes into the slot on the right. McCauley on third and 10. Gets a big rush, gets away from it, stays on his feet. McCauley only makes it to the 40, and it's fourth down. I don't know what it. I'm not quite sure what McCauley was thinking in that situation. It's third and ten. You've got to break a great run there. You know, you're better off setting up and giving yourself a shot throwing it downfield because he had a bunch of defenders in front of him. You're not going to make six guys mix in a matter of five yards. You know, once, once he took off on the run, it was fourth down coming up. It looks like a block on for RPI. Catiglio back to kick. Nope, not much of a rush there. McCarthy takes it at the 20, goes down, and he's still got – Nope, did he lose possession? Ball's loose. Everybody's piling on. The ball comes squeaking out of the pile over to the 25, and WPI – yeah, WPI has it at the 21. McCarthy fumbles it away, and WPI gets a huge break with 7.44 left to go in today's game. I am not sure what happened there. 
I mean, that situation where you would call for a fair catch, I mean, with that much pressure coming down on you. The only thing I'm noticing is Pat McCarthy's wearing wide receiver gloves today, and he usually is out there playing barehanded. I'm wondering if maybe he had an injury on one of those hands, and that's what's getting to him, and that's why he's wearing the gloves. But in this situation, and the rest of the game, I'd take those things off. Again, M Pat McCarthy, over his career for four years, this is his fourth year, very sure-handed receiver, not many drops. If, you know. McCauley hands off on first down to Champagne, stays on his feet, fights inside the 20. Champagne is to the 16. That fumble may be costly for RPI. Definitely. If WPI puts this one in, we're halfway through the fourth quarter. WPI up by seven. If WPI puts this in, RPI is in a world of hurt. Yes. I mean, any score here turns it back into a two-possession game. So now if you're the defense, you got to start thinking takeaway. You know, look for an opportunity to get a strip or an interception. We're pushing back on a field goal range. Second and four, ball at the 16-yard line. McCauley takes the handoff, well, pardon me, gives away the ball on the handoff to Champagne, and he stopped just inside the 15-yard line. And that's Colin King coming through on the penetration and getting the leg to pull him down for a short gain. And if you wonder why Joe King harps on special teams, we've seen enough of it today. They make a huge difference in the outcome of a game. Third down and two as the ball's on the 14 officially. RPI needs to get to the 12. McCauley gives to Mello. Mello is stopped at the 13, I think. He didn't get enough for a first down. Clock continues to run, 6.18 to go in the fourth quarter. Now if you're WPI, what do you do? The field goal kicking team has not had a good day. I think you're still gonna try and get points here. I mean, do you, do you how much faith do you have in your offense? And your, well, the way they've been running the ball today, you only need to get one yard. They need to get one to keep the drive going and take another couple minutes off the clock. The field goal kicking unit missed one, blocked one, made one. I'm not feeling confident in that. No, it doesn't at least like I'm not. Either. It doesn't look like they are either. Well, they're running out of time. They've only got five seconds left on the play clock. They'd be taking a timeout here. Somebody's got to look at the clock. Yeah, clock. yeah. now they're going to take the timeout. They're going to think this one over. This is a big play. Again, that's the first time out of the second half. RPI has all three. WPI will have two left after this one. That starts to become a factor in this situation. 5.42 left in the fourth quarter of play. 17 to 10, WPI leads. and WPI with the fourth and one at the RPI 13-yard line. Again, starting to get hungry. They're starting to smell victory at this point. Haven't won this game in 13 years. Sometimes the meal goes to who's hungry. And at this point, we'll see how much fight RPI has left in him for the last five minutes and 42 seconds. Join the sounds of the RPI band. Played smoke on the water. I love it. WPI brings the offense out. They are going for it on fourth and one after they talked it over. It looked like they were going for it before the timeout. Then they took the timeout. Now they are definitely going for it. RPI is going to stack the line here. Mello and Champagne in the backfield along with McCauley. Two wide outs to the right. And that's a first down easily as Mello gets inside the 10. He's at the 8. WPI keeps possession. And this is not on the defense at this point. They shouldn't have been in this situation. They did their job, got them the punt and the special teams, the fumble, th that's going to be the play of the game. First and 10, WPI at the 8 of RPI. 5.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. You got a very fast running game today. McCauley out of the shotgun. Champagne on the carry. Champagne's got some room. Champagne on his feet. He's in for the touchdown. And celebration going on here. Is it going to get in the vein of excessive? No, it's not. But 
very, very excited team from WPI coming out from Worcester today. <laughs> if this extra point is good, going up by 14 points with only five minutes left in the fourth quarter. And now you put a lot more pressure on your offense. They were starting to play, but now they got to come up with two touchdowns in five minutes. They need two TDs. Beck on to try the extra point. It's up and good. 5.04 to go in the game, 24 to 10. WPI leads. But you got to feel about that. It, it, it could very easily be 24 14 at this point. It would be touchdown in a field goal situation instead of two touchdowns. Again, you get that questionable call, Pat McCarthy with the ball in the end zone. I thought he had it. it and now I think the question, if we go back to that, I think the question on that play was, was did he have possession or was he juggling it? He, he clearly yeah. ended up with the ball. Yes. There's no doubt about that. But he also went out. And yes. the question was... At what point did he have that solid possession? Correct. We don't have the greatest angle. We're a couple of stories up above. We're not right there. Um, I'm not going to give you a definitive on that one, and we didn't see a replay. Uh, obviously, you have a play like that. RPI thinks it was a catch. WPI thinks it's not. Officials have to make a determination. Right. The one thing I did notice, none of the officials signaled a catch. Right. They talked, they looked, and then decided it wasn't. Nobody on the field for the officiating staff appeared certain it was a catch. Right. Right now, it's a two-touchdown lead for WPI uh, against an RPI offense. We're going to be talking about this. That has only scored six points in the second half in three games. It's three halves, they've only scored six points after halftime this year. Wood takes the carry upfield to the 35 in between the hash marks, and he stopped around the 39. And every yard is going to be important here. You've got to move down the field, and you've got to score points fast at this point. Now we did see the offense start to click on that last drive. You hope that chemistry and that positive energy is going to stick with them here, despite the problems that happen on special teams. RPI, well, there's another factor here. RPI not only needs to score, but you know WPI is keeping this ball on the ground if they get it back. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's, it's probably going to be score on side kick and score again at this point. I think you'd have to go that way. Four wideout formation for RPI. Costa in the backfield. Herman throwing near side. That's complete, but immediately tackled was Bur Burpo. He stopped at the 44. I mean, you have to start playing this like a two-minute drill now. Yes. The, the short passes caught in bounds aren't going to do you any good in this situation. If it's short and out of bounds, maybe. Three wide outs to the left for Herman. One on the near side, McCarthy. He's all alone. Costa in the backfield. On second down. Herman looking downfield. Puts the ball up too far. He was looking for Caswell. Overthrew him by five yards. Show you the arm strength again. Trying to split the safeties there. A little too much air underneath the ball to try and get that there. But again, that's what you've got to be going for in this situation. So you got to get the ball downfield. Ball stays at the 43 for third down. And officially five. Flag out on the play. This is going against RPI. They're going to get, what, Wood there for a false start? Yes. He's going, uh, he was moving towards the line of scrimmage, though, at the start of the play. So This isn't the CFL. You can be moving laterally in motion, but he was still moving forward in motion when the ball was snapped. And you can't do that. He's in the wrong country. Or, and it's also not, uh, they can do that in uh, Arena League. Like, you do everything in Arena League. I think you can bring weapons on the field in <laughs> Arena League. Four wideouts. They gotta be legal weapons, though. Wood in the backfield. Third down and ten. Herman rolls left, looking downfield, looking for a huge chunk of change, overthrows! Oh. Nick Weber. Is that Nick Weber? 82. Nick Weber. Overthrows him on the sideline. Oh, yeah. Adam, too. Wide open. Open. That would have been. That would have been seven. You got to go for it here. Oh, you have, yes. If, if you bring out the punt team, you're giving up at this point. Yes, you have to go for it. RPI down by 14 here in the fourth quarter. 4.15 to go in the game. Fourth down and 10 at their own 39. They are going for it. No choice. If you give it to WPI, they're going to burn time off that clock. Again, three left, one right. 
Wood in the backfield gets a good block. His man gets up. Herman puts the ball up, looking for McCarthy, and it's oh. too far. Just off the fingertips as McCarthy dove for it, and RPI turns it over on downs. Oh. It was a well-thrown ball. Yes, there were three passes there. That was the only one that was pretty much on target. And Pat McCarthy, who's normally a, a sure-handed receiver, I, I, I start, I mean, again, he doesn't usually wear gloves. He's wearing gloves today. I'm concerned. Maybe he's had an injury to one of those hands, and, and that's the issue. You know, we've seen him on the punt, and we've seen him catching, you know, catching passes. He hasn't been as sure-handed today. I, I'm thinking he's got to be hurt. I mean, because he's not a person who drops passes. First and 10, WPI at the RPI 39. Champagne on the first down carry. Stopped after a pickup of two, and I have to think, you're going to stop the clock soon? Yes. And you've got to hold him up and look for a strip. RPI is going to call their first time out of this second half. 3.59 to go in today's game. 24 to 10, WPI leads. And they had a shot on that last drive if they can get in the end zone. Now it's starting to get towards desperation. WPI is going to run it and make RPI take their timeouts away. That's Those are the next two plays. Yep. And then you let it run on third down and punt it away. And they're going to likely be starting at best from their own 20-yard line when they get the ball back, expecting, if you're lucky, three minutes on the clock and you need two touchdowns. That's best-case scenario. Still not out of the realm of possibility yet. WPI coming out for a second down and 10. McCauley gives on the run to McClune, and he runs right and gets down to about the 34 when he is stopped, and RPI takes another timeout. All right, that looked a lot better. Oh, the spot's a lot better than the run looked if you're an RPI fan. It's going to be third and a long five coming up. As the crowd is quiet here at East Campus Stadium, RPI a very distinct possibility of starting out one and two on the season and 0 and one in the league. And that's going to put you in a tough situation if you're trying to make playoffs. You know, Playoffs? You're not mathematically eliminated. Yeah, the, but the goals of this engineer team, but the talent that they had was, I mean, they started the season with hopes of the NCAAs. Now they're going to be in the season with hopes of five and four. Let's hope now. Here comes, the, I mean, one first down here, and even though there's almost four minutes left in the game, one first down here almost takes, you know, coming back really out of the realm of reasonable possibility if it's not there yet. Rolling to his left, McCauley throws. That's oh. going to be a first down catch down to the RPI 20. He went out of bounds. Nick Bean on the reception, but that's a big play. RPI can't get the ball back. And that was, I mean, that's a risk you call the pass by there. You could be doing RPI a favor if you're the WPI coach and it's incomplete, but they take the risk and they pick up five yards. Oh. It's just a rough situation here. You've got to come up with a play here now. You, you need The defense needs to get a turnover at this point because now you're in the point where if they kick a field goal, this game's over. If they get in the field goal range and put one in, the game is over. 3.18 to go. RPI trailing by 14. McLuhan on the handoff on first down. It stopped just inside the 20, and RPI burns their last timeout. Two more downs, three more downs, and they can't stop the clock. Again, you got to be thinking turnover here. If they're going to run the football, you get down at the legs and you hold the guy up and you get the ball out as quickly as you can. You start punching at the ball from any end and you, you try to get it out. And if you're if you're the WPI coach now, you're saying to your running backs, ball security, two hands on the ball at all times, lock it up against your chest. If you get hit, go down. Again, this is where if you fight for extra yards as a, as a running back for WPI, you could be doing yourself a disservice. Get down. Teams are talking it over. RPI, it's a desperate situation. 
you don't have the ball in these circumstances, it's brutal. Yeah. And again, this is not on the defense. It's a special teams play. That fumble on the punt return. And, you know, you can't put pressure on or put all the onus on a second-half play. There were plays in the first half that should have gone a different way as well. But those are the ones we're going to remember. RPI out of timeouts with 3.11 to go in the game. Ball just inside the 20. McCauley hands off to Champagne. He is stopped at the 28. No, pardon me, the 18. Bad number day. Now RPI cannot stop the clock. Third down and eight. Clock will continue to run. And it's a two-score lead. WPI in no rush to snap the ball. No two-minute warning in college football. So that's the last time the clock will stop, except on an incompletion, or if WPI were to take a touch, take a timeout or a out-of-bounds play. Out of the shotgun once again, McCauley in the flat to McClune. Has trouble, gets away from one tackler, stays on his feet. Now he'll get swarmed under at the 24, and there's 222 left in the fourth quarter. And WPI doesn't have to snap the ball until, well, until there's like about 140 left. Yeah. That's an interesting play call, though, because it gives you p potential to move backwards and take yourself out of a makeable field goal range. I mean, coming up with a score here in this situation is not exactly the priority. If you're WPI, you know, well, you'd like to score because you're not going to finish the game with the ball right now. WPI down to 10 seconds on the play clock. Looks like they are going to wait until the last moment and take a timeout. Yes. And that's what's going to happen. No, we'll take a delay of game. Back it up and give them room to actually try and punt it here. They're going to try and pin them down on the one-yard line. So WPI takes a delay of game penalty with 137 left to go in the game. So best case scenario... You're going to have the ball on the 20 yard. If you're RPI, you're going to have the ball on the 20 yard line with a minute 30 left in the game. And you've got to get two touchdowns. So you've got to get down the field, score, onside kick, and score in a minute and a half. It's been done and it can happen, but really going to take some incredible execution here. Oh, they're not going to punt. They're not going to punt. Oh, no, they're going to do the hooch punt. It's booted away and goes into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. They lined up three deep in the backfield, and then Gallagher Hogan got the handoff, waited, and then sent it downfield. No return as it just barely went into the end zone. Had he been in the other yard, got another yard less, they would have yeah. been able to down it inside the one. But instead, it'll come out to the 20 on the touchback. 129 to go here in the fourth. 24 to 10, WPI on top. And there was a WPI player down there, but he was in the end zone and didn't have time to come back into the field of play and reestablish before he touched the football. And now you've got to go downfield. you got to catch and get out of bounds on every play or get into the end zone. Makes playing defense easy. You see the gap between the safeties. Herman on first down. Throws. That's complete to Davis on the far side. Stopped at the 30. He need to get out. He, he turns up field to try and get more yardage. He needed to get out of bounds on that play. And if you if you're at the game listening, or you're not, I'll just say it. WPI is going to leave the middle of the field wide open here. This, the distance between the safeties is huge. There's a huge hole there because RPI cannot afford to go down the middle of the field. We've got a timeout. Davis was stopped in bounds. The clock stopped. Oh boy. The clock was at 123. The clock should have been running that whole time. It stopped. It's, it's I called, could hear the coach yelling. Yeah, that, that's, that's called home field advantage. <laughs> <laughs> no, someone. The uh, clock should not have stopped. Could be someone on a work study down there. So the clock is going to run off here. Clock is right now at 123. Now they're put it to 116. It'll keep seven seconds off the clock. And now it has to start along with the 25 second clock for the play. 112 to go. Herman out of the shotgun on second and one, although it doesn't really matter much. 
Herman scrambling, still scrambling, gets hit, escapes his, almost hit by his own man, throws downfield, that's incomplete. It was over the hands of Burpo. But th things to be positive about if you're an RPI fan, Mike Herman showing he understands the situation. Didn't take off and run in a situation under pressure. Was able to show his escapability, his strength to fight off the, to fight off the defenders and still get a pass downfield. You, you're starting to see more play and more thought process out of Mike, Her Mike Herman the way you want to, starting to play quarterback. Herman looking over to the sidelines. 102 to go. It's a third and one officially. Herman out of the shotgun once more. Rolling right. Looking downfield. Throws. And that's short to McCarthy. And it'll be fourth down with 56 and a half seconds to go. Over at the field house, the women's hockey team starting up their season. They are trailing at the first intermission, two to one, to the University of Montreal. Hockey starts early, man. Keeps getting earlier and earlier. It's, it's not even October. Fourth down, Herman with a keeper just to get the first down. RPI has no timeouts left, so they need to get back to the line. They have to clock this one. Well, the, well, the first down will stop the clock. Now it starts up again. 50 seconds left. Okay, and you've got to get in the end zone. You need time for an onside kick and another desperation throw. Well, let's face it. They're, they may not have enough time. Herman throws. Look at the Caswell complete. WPI territory hit once, and Caswell is down at the 28. We got a flag down. That'll stop the clock. Clock stops with 36 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Holding, holding against RPI. Of course. <laughs> So that nice run, or catch and run, all comes back. It's still first down, but yards off and yeah. time off the clock. You lost both the yards and the time. Yep. It's just, every time they've had a chance to get something going today, RPI, I mean, is, is something's got a penalty the wrong way, you know, a call the wrong way, you know, or something that should have been simple getting messed up. 24 to 10, WPI leads. 30 seconds left to go in today's game. Herman drops back, doesn't see anything downfield, and he's near the line of scrimmage when he throws that one. It's up there for anybody. It goes incomplete. Looking for McCarthy to make a play in the ball there, but at this point, you know, what do you do? Uh, there's 18.2 seconds left. Game's over. They weren't without their opportunities today. Ball goes back to the 22 as the crowd has thinned here at the East Campus Stadium. Yes. As RPI is going to lose the Transit Trophy game for the first time in a long time. Herman on this down throws to Caswell at the 30. Cuts inside. He's taken down at the 34. That was second down. It'll go to third down. I don't think RPI has enough time to down the ball. Nope. And that's going to be it. It's final here in Troy, 24 to 10. WPI defeats RPI, and the Transit Trophy goes to Worcester. And RPI season, it's, well. In doubt. I guess we can talk about that. You had mentioned earlier the goal of the program is the playoffs. Yes. I'm not sure that's attainable this year. Well, with two losses, now they need they to can't get an at-large bid. You have to win. Bid. You have to win the conference. Win the league now. And frankly, they're not playing well enough to win the league right now. No, they're that's just, true. They're not playing they're, they're, well. They're playing well in spurts, and they've shown ability, but they haven't found that consistency and that swagger that I was talking to Coach King about yet. They, they, they haven't found their personality as a team. They're getting closer, but this team still needs to come together and really find what it is, you know, that they're going to be. They used to be RPI traditionally was a good second-half team. They have been a yes. bad second half team this year. Yes. Endicott, actually, the first half was better against Endicott. Three points. They were plus three in the first half, even in the second half. Utica, second half was not good. Today, second half, not good. They're not coming out of the locker room good. And they're going into the locker room too close to come out of the locker room not good. Yeah, and it's. Yeah, and like I said, it points to either second half adjustments, which on a Joe King coach team. I'm not going to point to that, but also RPI traditionally has been a very well-conditioned team, 
So I, it, it's hard to take a knock on that. I'm not going to say that they're going to come into a game out of shape, but it's possible. It's possible that the conditioning, you know, in the spring and into, you know, the season wasn't what they needed. They haven't shown it in the second half. Or, you know, I, I, I don't know what it would be. The, the diagnosis, both, op both options don't really hold much water. So it, it's, it's going to be something that they're going to have to try and figure out and practice this next week, you know, coming back. Um, if I can just get the schedule here, you know, I'm so good at my job. And they're going to come back and they go to Rochester next weekend. Um, you know, and they're going to have to rebound. Uh, Rochester is one of the best running backs in the league in Clarence Onyeruka. And you got to figure out how you're going to stop him because Rochester is going to score. Onyeruka was injured recently, but yes. still, it, it doesn't matter. Rochester is not a pushover squad. No. They're not a pushover squad, and right now RPI just they're not playing well. That's that's just the bottom line. They're not playing well, and there's no other way to put it. WPI came in and played a better game today. Playing inconsistent. If we, if well, we be they're playing inconsistent. In a large sense, those two are synonymous because yeah. well, is you don't they don't have they don't have enough good parts when they're consistent to overcome the bad they parts. When they're not, yes. Okay, then they're not playing well. That's that's just the bottom line. I mean. You, if you can be inconsistent and score five times, but then have lousy drives the other time and you get 35 points, yeah, that's, that's one thing. Yes. If you're inconsistent and only pick up a touchdown and a field goal, and you're, you're not winning football games. Yes, that's that's the end mm -hmm. result. I'm gonna let my buddy Penn here pick his engineers on offense and defense today, if he so chooses. I will. Uh, and hang on. Yes. I'm going to run down the scoring first. I'll give you some time to mull that over before we end up going over to the women's hockey game down at the Houston Fieldhouse, which again was 2-1 Montreal after one intermission. WPI got on the board first, uh, got the first lead of the game, never actually trailed in today's game. 11 minutes to go in the first quarter on the first drive of the game. They got a touchdown. Mello with a one-yard run. Beckles kick made it 7-0 WPI. That was the scoring after one quarter. In the second quarter, RPI tied it up. McCarthy with a one-yard touchdown reception with 7.52 to go in the half. Nilsson's kick made it 7-7. They went into the half tied at 7. Then in the third quarter, RP WPI would come out and put up 10 points, and that would be it. 10.42 left to go in the third quarter. Beckel with a 25-yard field goal. WPI in the lead to stay 10-7. And then a touchdown with 5.07. 